Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. I'm uh, Ellie Deutsch, and I'm going to be walking you through it, probably without our speaker. I don't think our speaker uh, is going to make it, and uh, that's a shame. Uh, I haven't heard from him, and that's why uh, I don't think he's going to come. But in any case, I'm going to uh, start the session, and hopefully he'll join us maybe late, uh, and maybe some other time. So welcome. If you could add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to, to add. Um, Moodle MOOC is really exciting because it allows uh, educators from around the world to communicate and learn together. And that is something we couldn't do uh, a few years ago, in fact. So uh, technology is making learning easier for all of us because uh, we're not limited to our schools, to our libraries. Uh, we are part of global learning. And I think that's uh, really, really exciting. Our um, speakers, you can see them. There are 28 presenters in the current uh, Moodle MOOC. Moodle MOOC um, happens three times a year in June, October, and in February, and it's going to continue. So this is the fourth one, and the next one is going to be the fifth. The presenters are from different countries. We've already heard from Andreas from Denmark. We've heard from Zaid from Malaysia. We've heard from Cheryl from the United States. We've heard from... Let's see who else do we have. Liz from Australia. Shelly Terrell Sanchez from the United States. We've heard from Janet, a researcher and writer for doctoral students, mostly. And Janet is from the United States. We've also heard from Janvier, who's from Bourgogne, but he's uh, currently in the uh, United Kingdom, and we've heard from Ebba from Sweden. So we've got a lot more presenters from other countries to go. So it's really, really exciting not only to hear from them, but to learn how they teach and learn with technology. And it's really about using technology for instruction and learning. And the topics vary. Today's topic is about the syllabus. How many of you uh, have to go through creating syllabi every year, or at least uh, twice a year maybe, or maybe longer? So just add in the chat box if you've had to write a syllabus and you were really, really uh, concerned because you had the administration asking it to be done as quickly as possible, and you didn't always know what to do. Okay, so I can put my thumb up because I've had problems with, um, with syllabi. Syllabi. All right, so this is what this is about. Let me just uh, show you. This is called the Salsa, the name of this open source that is developed. It's a syllabus, open source syllabus. And uh, George Jokel III is involved in the project. He leads it. He's the manager of this particular project. And there is a great need for this kind of project. Let me go to the next. Uh, if you've never heard of open syllabus, there is something called, you know, there's open learning, there's the MOOCs, which are open, massive online learning. There's open educational resources. Any other open that you're familiar with? If you could just add in the chat box, what open? Open resources. Moodle is an open resource. Any other open that you're familiar with? Because it's really exciting to learn about these uh, projects, and we'll talk a little bit about what they mean. Since Moodle is an open source okay open source so what does it mean when it's open any ideas all 
OpenStax, very good, Eileen. That's right, open source textbooks for college. That's a great example. Excellent. That's right. Uh, open source, of course, like Moodle, thank you, that as well. It's freely available. Yeah, it's generally free. It doesn't mean that it has to be free. But what is open about it? It's free to use and to, and I think um, our speaker mentioned it, um, I think it was Shelley Terrell who mentioned to use, reuse, mix, when she said that you can do anything with her work. And this is CC, Creative Commons, for those of you who are not familiar with Creative Commons. The idea is to be able to not hoard your own information and not to compete with other people for learning, but to work together collaboratively and develop something even better that you can do by yourself. And there's no money involved because everybody contributes freely. Uh, coding, exactly, Andrea. It's also open to modify. That's the point. You can modify the coding. You can use it, uh, reuse it, mix it, do whatever you want with it. And that's what uh, it's about. There. Thank you, Nelly, for adding that. That's right. That's the Salsa Initiative. And uh, notice that it's by a university. Okay. So the initiative is coming from universities. And I think that's very commendable because usually universities are interested in making money. They have to make a living to stay open. But um, this is a project based in a university in the United States. Okay, that's uh, the project. And it's higher education. The name of the university is Utah University State. Okay, Utah. I don't know if you've heard of Utah State in the United States. I uh, no, don't know if you're familiar with all the states. If you're not from the states, since I'm from Canada, I had to learn this in geography and history. And I, I think we learned more about the United States than we learned about Canada. That's, that's just joking. But we did learn about the, uh, uh, the UK and the British colonies and so on. Okay, uh, let me know when our speaker comes in. Uh, hold your fingers, and let's hope that George uh, can make it. George was at a conference until yesterday, uh, a conference held for Open Syllabus Project. Now, a little bit about the uh, project. The Open Syllabus Project, or OSP, is building the first, the first notice large-scale online database of university course syllabi as a platform for new research, teaching, and administrative tools. They hope that the Open Syllabus Project will improve our understanding of teaching. So again, this is a way to improve teaching, publishing of material like uh, textbooks, of course, and other intellectual history on a wide range of fronts, such as what are the most taught texts? Okay, and if you had to answer this question, what texts do you think are the most taught? If you say Shakespeare, I'll go maybe. Okay, so when you think of texts, I'm talking about texts from old times, historical text. Okay, so um, if you think of what the excellent Tom, that's that's perfect. That's right. That is definitely correct. Okay, any other historical text, intellectual, and and the idea that it's intellectual property, everybody has a right to it, and why not? Why should we pay for learning? You know why why shouldn't it be free and open the way air is? Okay, we don't pay for air, thank goodness. We do pay for water in some places where um, there isn't enough water, unfortunately, or the water is uh, not good enough and we have to buy water. But, okay, so um, also how do schools or departments, and we're talking about higher education within a field, differ from one another? 
So the idea is to join the academia and work together. Okay, so I think that's a huge venture and a wonderful one. Let me just get rid of my webcam there because um, the connection is a bit slow there with all of us from different parts of the world. So you can get the link to this. Um, and here is the link. I don't know if anybody found it, but you could probably uh, Google any of these terms and get it. How many of you have heard of Open Syllabus Project? Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you've heard of this. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Kirsten's. Okay, so it's something that you might want to use in the future, especially uh, and get involved. Even if you're not a school, you might want to get involved as an individual instructor or maybe independent teacher and access the information that they have. Um, okay, and if you want to know what Utah looks like, um, you might find it interesting. It's a very nice looking state. There's the University of Utah in the United States. As a Canadian, when I think of Utah, I think of cowboys, but uh, I don't know what you think. So salsa, as I said, is completely free and you can start creating your salsa right now. Okay, so uh, let me take you through there. Let me know if George gets here. Okay, I'm just a warming up. This is a warm up for our speaker, George. Okay, there's um, George in the collage. Okay, there's George. Johnny Pepper Arrow. That's not George. Hello, Johnny, and welcome. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to screen share and I'm going to freeze as I do. So you'll hear my voice, but um, since I don't have a webcam, you're not going to see me freeze. Feel free to use the chat box, ask questions, um, write what you think uh, as you hear me, whatever comes to mind. And you may also reflect on this presentation, whether our speaker gets here or not. All right, so let's go to salsa. Hope you can see this. There is salsa. And you can create a salsa right now. And I think it's really exciting to call it salsa. Okay. Um, so you click on, you go into salsa.usu, the university, the state university of Utah, Utah University State. You click on create and you can get started. So it's really easy. You can actually, uh, this is in beta, of course, they're still working on this, but you can help out. And that's really important so that they learn how they're doing and maybe you'll be able to recommend different things. So this is part of what the open is about. Open means that not only that you can use the codes and help out and improve the product, but you can also be there as someone who's not familiar with coding, a person who's not technical but a per or a developer, but someone who's a teacher, an educator, or a learner who wants to help out. So all you need to do is build, okay? Add the information the way it is here, okay? Notice that uh, you can connect this to Moodle. And that's what uh, George was going to speak about. And I believe George will be able to speak. If not today, we'll get him for another day. Um, you can connect this to Moodle, which is really exciting. Imagine having a syllabi in your Moodle courses. Okay, so um, right now it's for Canvas. Okay, it goes straight into Canvas, but they're working on developing this for Moodle as well. Okay, and that's where um, I come in. And that's why uh, I'm keen on working with George in order to make this happen. Okay, so go through this and see what you think. You can develop your syllabi here and then connect it eventually. Hopefully, it'll be in the Moodle so that you can work it through Moodle. If you have your school Moodle, you can uh, suggest uh, salsa. 
to your administration. And uh, sorry about that. Here's more about the Open Syllabus Project. Okay, you can read about it and get involved. Okay, notice there are also partnership organizations. And getting involved is the first step to collaborating and learning together. And that's what it's about. Okay, so let me come back, stop screen sharing. And then I'm going to fix the settings here a bit. All right, so uh, were you able to see that? Let me know, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, if you were able to see the screen sharing. I'm always curious whether uh, everybody was with me or whether I was alone. So, okay, thank you, Tom. That's why sometimes I take people with me, or at least I leave, I let them have their mics open so that I don't feel that I was there by myself, talking to myself. All right, so are there any questions so far? Remember, asking questions is the key to learning. If we don't ask, we can't fill in the gap. Okay, so if everything is clear, I worry. So if you could add some questions in the chat, please. Where are your thumbs up? <laughs> Pardon, is that a question? Where's your thumbs up, Eileen? What do you mean? Um, I don't think Eileen... Eileen, go to Smiley. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, it's in the Smiley. If you click on the Smiley in the chat, if you look to the right of the chat, okay, there's color. You can also change the color of your font and the size. Hello, Percy. And is there any support for syllabus designers? When you say support, do you mean like do they pay anyone? The answer, of course, you probably know. They only pay the managers, I presume, but I think those that are helping out are not getting paid. That's one of the things of open source, that um, it's the glory, or it's the working, the love of working together. But generally, you don't get, um, you talked about Moodle for Africa yesterday. Can you just remind me again before I send you an email? Yeah, Moodle for Africa, um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about it with Norbert, uh, Norbert is from Kenya. The idea, of course, is um, to have a Moodle MOOC um, for Africa, where we discuss um, African issues and how um, challenges, I would say, not issues, and how we can um, work together, collaborate, and um, Moodle with Africa. In other words, bring the world to Africa and bring Africa to the world through Moodle and, of course, through this uh, Moodle MOOC. So everybody is welcome. It's not just uh, those of you who are in Africa. Thank you, Nelly. Um, that's the open getting excited. <laughs> yes, it is exciting. Uh, definitely exciting. Any questions about, uh, it's okay to digress. I don't call it that. I just call it curiosity. Getting excited about, yes. Uh, Here is uh, open the syllabus again. Notice uh, the different text that uh, they're working on. But there was the conference. Uh, the conference was until yesterday, and I have a feeling that, um, you know, sometimes when we go to conferences, we forget. And I think that George simply uh, was uh, so engrossed in the conference until yesterday that he wasn't aware that he had to get up early in the morning today. Or maybe there were flight. You know, sometimes, I know in the United States, I don't know how many of you have had these problems, but I have had to stay, for example, in Denver at the airport for over uh, 24 hours. I mean, sometimes they just, after 12 o'clock or so, 1 o'clock in the evening, they in, in the morning, they just um, cancel flights. Okay, quota. <laughs> Workers' quota. The flight is canceled. That's it. So sometimes it's hard to get back home. So And there are no reasons for it. It's just things happen. So it could be that he wasn't able to get back from the conference, and that's why uh, he couldn't make it today. Okay, so let, let's uh, look at some other things. Salsa. Uh, I suggest you uh, get an account on Salsa. I was just showing you before. And, uh, and get a feel for it. I'd like your opinion, and I'm sure they would too, because uh, we do want to get it into Moodle. Okay, that's the idea. The idea is to experiment 
and added to Moodle and hopefully to uh, Moodle MOOC 5 in October. That sounds exciting, Raymond, if we're talking about. Uh, yes, definitely. That would be an awesome, uh, great idea for a, an international event, online event, Raymond. Let's talk about that. Okay, now I was just uh, to update you. Um, our speaker is probably stuck somewhere um, between flights and couldn't make it home or is not able to get to his um, internet and join us. So I've talked about salsa. Uh, and salsa is part of the open syllabus project. Just like there's open source, there's also open syllabus. And the idea is to connect and to work together in developing a syllabus for um, learning management systems and for online learning. But what I'm particularly interested in is adding it to Moodle. Right now, it can be added to uh, Canvas. Oh, you were thinking about the speaker and using mobile. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but um, I'm not, I'm really not sure uh, if they have, I don't know, you know, with, with flights and that, I don't know if they could do that, but yes, he could, he could, but since this is his first time on WizIQ, I'm not sure whether that would have been um, possible. All right, so let's see, uh, have you created an account? Let me know if you've created an account on Salsa. Give me a thumbs up if you've created an account. Okay, so let me ask the question. Uh, thumbs up when you create an account. An account on Salsa. No thumbs down, only thumbs up. Okay, so um, any other questions about Salsa? Well, you have to try to create an account and see if you have any questions, because I think you may have a few. And here's a nice uh, image, if I can find it again. Hmm. There's the image. There should be an image here. There's George doing the salsa. I don't know if that's, that doesn't look like that's the salsa, but dancing. About the mobile or did you put, did you add another question there? Uh, Raymond, let me see. Was thinking about the rain, the speaker. Was there another question, Raymond? that I missed. Oh, here we go. Is it like Moodle material gone after course? And Oh, that's a good one. And who owns the material? No, you see with Moodle Raymond, it's also open. In fact, our course, the Moodle, uh, the Moodle MOOC, uh, the Moodle for beginners and all the courses there are actually open. You can get the, uh, the Moodle courses on Moodle for teachers. You can get all the Moodle courses on, uh, Moodle doesn't have to be closed. Uh, you can actually uh, download it. You can download the course. And not just uh, this course, you can download other courses. And um, Moodle allows you to do that. Okay, it depends on the school. Most universities will not, okay, which is a shame, okay, unless uh, it's an open university, which there isn't. No, even open universities don't. Um, even I think the UK may have a course or two. But I totally agree the courses should be open too. But 
you know, money gets in the way um, with those things because they need to make a living. Good question, Kirsten. I asked the same thing. Maybe someone can find the answer. That's an excellent question. Does uh, salsa stand for anything? There we go. Styled and accessible learning services agreements. Very good, Andrea. You found it. Can you give us the link where you found it? Okay. And they tell you how to join as well. Notice here too there's more information at the universe at the Utah State University. They use Canvas, which is why right now it's part of Canvas. And if you're interested in more, and they even offer you a chance to innovate. And I think this is very, very encouraging. The universities, a small university, because you know that the, uh, the big universities are paying lots of money, um, for example, to develop Coursera and develop other um, edX and um, other uh, LMSs that are very expensive and not open. So when a university like uh, Utah State uh, comes up with the idea of, you want to help us? There. There's the link if you're interested in helping the university with other innovations. Okay, that's also Utah State University. That's right. But you can say that you want to get involved. So try it out. The idea is to try it out. That's what it's all about, trying it out. Any other questions? Okay, I, I see our speaker has not come, and uh, I don't know... Uh, what's going to happen? So um, I'm going to let you know if I uh, hear anything and uh, if we re have another class specifically for salsa and how salsa can be added to Moodle because that's what um, I'm interested. And there's a question there or a query. I wonder if it'll be open for universities or teachers who don't live in the United States. Yes, that's always a question. Open is generally open to anyone. That's the idea. You know, Moodle uh, was was developed by, it started actually, by uh, Martin Dogiamis in Australia. He was um, a doctoral student. He never finished his PhD, but he started his PhD with Moodle. And um, you have users from all over the world in different languages too. So a project may start in one area of the world. But if it's open source and open, like uh, open syllabus then or salsa, then um, it's not place or time dependent, really. OK, Ibhalash. So uh, that's get involved. The idea is to get involved. And I think that when it comes to collaboration, that's from my experience. Uh, there's more openness to collaboration in South America, for example, and other parts of the world. Maybe it's cultural, I don't know, than in the United States. I think the United States, I, I view the United States, you know, from Canada, but I view the United States as being very competitive. Canada, you know, as you know, it has a social system uh, for health, health care is free, and so on. So it's, it's more like Scandinavian countries where... Uh, the important person is the individual, and uh, the government does all they can to cater to the individual. And competition is put down. In other words, it's great to have competition, 
but not at everybody's expense. Oh, yes, Kirsten, you can even do it in German. Of course, that's the idea. Exactly, you can write it in German. Same thing with Moodle. As you know, Moodle is in, uh, comes in many languages. And uh, even the Moodle MOOC, you can actually uh, use your native language or another language of your choice. Yes, definitely. All right, so for more information and more questions, I'll try to get uh, George, see what's happening. I emailed him about an hour ago, uh, over an hour actually, and we'll see what's happening and I'll update you. So thank you everyone. Thank you for joining. If you're interested in doing a uh, reflection on salsa and what you heard, you're welcome to do that. I think there's lots of information online that um, you have. So uh, thank you very much and I'll see you later on today. We've got uh, Maria, and some really exciting um, adventures later on. Thank you.